Oh man, this is gonna be a good one. I'm sure you saw the thumbnail. I'm sure you saw the title. But before we get into that action, I wanted to let you know and remind you, link down below, the 1988 LS Smartphone Record giveaway is still live. We're going to be wrapping that up relatively soon, so go ahead and get it while you still can. And every entry that you get is directly supporting me, and I appreciate the support so very much. Thank you to everybody that has supported. So now let's go ahead and get into the action where we are cutting apart a perfectly good El Camino, so that way we can put it on a Honda chassis platform. It sounds even funny to say it, but I know I like what's happening, so let's get started. And now, you're watching the wonderful yet regretful feeling that is three Costco hot dogs to the dome channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. So what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So tonight I had a little time to get out to the shop. So the first part of this video I'm going to be working a little bit at night just doing what I got to do. So in the last video we got the CRV stripped down to the point where it's pretty much just a platform that is ready to receive a body. The body that it's going to receive is obviously this El Camino body. So I kept whittling away getting rid of all of the outer panels so I had the inside. This one is going to be kind of the opposite. I'm going to keep whittling away all of the inner panels until I have just an outside. Then I have the inside of this car, the outside of that car, put them together, then we're off to the races. If only if it was that simple, right? So I think while I have a little bit of time, what I'm going to do, let's get the interior torn out. Let's get rid of this carpet. This dash is just shot. I'm not gonna be using any of this. So before I start cutting, I just need to get rid of everything that I possibly can. I mean, it's a shame because I'd like to use an El Camino headliner, for example, obviously, but this is just so torn up. I can foresee me having to buy a decent amount of new used parts for the El Camino when it's kind of like in the finishing phase, but I just need to get everything out of here for now because we're going to be doing welding and I don't want the headliner to catch on fire. And when I do welding and cutting, I'm going to have to protect the glass and blah, 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 blah. Let's get stuff ripped out of here, man. Come on. So the thing is, as I'm taking apart El Chapo over here, get it on my chop up, El Camino, El Chapo. I like it. I like the way that that looks and sounds and the way that it goes. As I'm taking this apart, I'm really in the mindset of, I don't need any of this stuff, so I don't care if I just rip it out, but it's, it still has to be relatively disassembled so that way stuff can be pulled out. Like this, I just spent a little while chasing this out. Kind of been a pain. Some of it broke out. But that's okay, because I didn't know exactly where all of the bolts were. But now we got a pretty good system going. Now that I forced it out, now it's out of there. <laughs> that's the rest of it. So it's been a little bit of a messy process, but that's just because the nature of this old piece of garbage. El Camino is going to be pretty nasty. So the plan is I need to get the firewall completely gone. I need to get the floor completely gone, as you can see right in there. So having that little section came out saved me a little bit of work because I need to get as close to the windshield as possible with still keeping it structurally sound and safe and whatnot. So I just need to keep working to get this to the point that it is the opposite or inverse of the CRV because I wanna start lifting this thing up and putting it over the CRV floor because this thing itself is nasty. CRV ain't too bad. So once we get off the body, we can work on the CRV and keep this thing rolling, dude. A lot of good progress thus far on El Chapo.
Alrighty, so as I've been chop, chop, chopping away on El Chapo, the El Camino over here, one thing that I figured is, if you see how much of the floor is cut out, I mean, it is a lot of it. We are making good progress. Now, you might be wondering, why did I not reinforce any of it while I cut out the floor? My thought process behind that is right now, it's still completely bolted to the frame. The frame isn't going to become out of whack because the frame is super strong compared to the structural integrity of the body. So the body is still bolted to the frame. Now I want to get to the process of pulling the body off of the frame. So before I go ahead and do that, now I want to add some of these braces. Now these braces, I don't want them to be in the way of me dropping the body onto the CRV platform over there. So I want to make a little bar off of this, do a straight bar into the door jam over here. Then I'm going to run something across and then figure out something else for the back. So what I got going on right here is I just have this little guy. This is going to kind of pull this out, pop that right there, then run a bar from there back to somewhere in the door jam. So I'm just going to focus on getting a bunch of bars in there so that way we can eventually lift this body off and then start trimming it even more to put it down on the CRV. That's what I can't wait for, man. To take this body off, drop it down, that's gonna be a good day. Don't know if that's gonna be today, but we just gotta keep working either way. See what I did there? So now we are focusing on those braces. Now I don't know if I mentioned the round tubing is significantly cheaper than the square tubing, but the round tubing is a little bit harder to connect to one another. So it's not super difficult if you have an angle grinder. Just make yourself a little fish mouth right there. That fish mouth will fit into this pipe. Super nice fit. I'll show you how I make these in a little bit. I'm kind of just moving right along and getting what I need to do. So that guy back there is going to fit right next to the little striker receiver, that's going to fit right there. And that is a nice fit and finish. Oh, that's a nice fit and finish for something that is going to be cut out anyways in the end. So as you can see, I didn't tack anything together because I wanted to make the full piece so that way by the time we are all set to go, I'm not pushing or pulling on the body in any weird direction. I'm just going to compare this to the other side, make sure it's relatively in the same spot, weld it together, and then we will connect these guys and then keep adding braces until I feel like it's strong enough. Once I feel like it's strong enough, this thing's coming off the frame. So at this point I wanted to show you how I cut this fish mouth or the opening in this tube to fit up really nicely with another tube. So what I got going on, my rule of thumb is a lot of people would think that it just comes up halfway, but in reality I don't go for halfway, I go for about a third. So with that in mind, this is about one and a half inches in diameter, so one third of one and a half inches is a half of an inch. Keep that half inch in mind. So what we got going on right here, I want to mark it at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. And this is all just kind of loose. So if you can see, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. So with that half inch, we are going to do the half inch, come up this way a half of an inch on 12 o'clock, and this way a half of an inch on six o'clock. So I just got this guy right here, and we are going to go right there, half an inch on 12 o'clock, bring it around to six o'clock, and then do the half of an inch on there as well. So now we have, or half an inch on one side, 
and then 180 degrees out we have our other half of an inch. Now let's mess with 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. So I want to curl this over just a little bit. This is my target line that I am shooting for on 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. So now we have half of an inch, our target, half of an inch, and our target. So now we are going to take this half of an inch mark and I'm going to make a straight line straight line to our target and that's going to kind of look like a curved line but in reality it is a straight line. Now I'm going to do the same thing our target to our half of an inch. Got a little bit loose over there but that's okay. So there we go we are looking at this inner one so that's the first one we are going to turn this around 180 degrees go from our half of an inch to our target right there from our half of an inch to our target right there there and there so now all of this section is what I'm going to cut out with a grinder and with this I'm going to make one cut on this side kind of holding the grinder at an angle then one cut on that side holding the grinder at an angle then we are going to clean this up with a flap disc so let's go ahead and make that cut and I'll show you what that looks like so we have our tube set up right here so what I'm going to focus on is starting at that half of an inch mark and then as I keep working those lines these lines should match because my angle should stay the same and you'll see let me just uh, let me just lop her off and we'll see what happens Keep in mind you can refine this if you need to. So that's one side. Let's go ahead and hit this other side. Do the same exact thing here. So as you can see, that was just one cut. Nice and easy. So let's go ahead and switch out for the flap disc and get this thing cleaned up a little bit. So with the flap disc, I like to get in there, really clean it up, just so that way the new pipe can slide in there. And then I like to also rotate this guy like that. Let me reset you up. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's check out the fit and finish now that we got something real good going on. Let's see if she's gonna be nice to us. Oh yeah. And how long did that take? Just a few minutes, that's how I do it. If there's a little gap in here, is there? Dude, it's perfect, all good. So hopefully you learned something from this. Now let's go ahead and take that, take what we learned and apply it to El Chapo. That's how I get a fish mouth knocked out with relatively inexpensive tools, basic stuff. Looks real good, man, I like it. Do you like that? Looks good, bro. So we got this guy sorted out over here. Now another really cool thing about this fish mouth style that I'm doing with these round tubes is you don't have to worry too, too much about tacking stuff together because once that mouth, that the fish, what that mouth do, fishy fool? Once the fish mouth is all set up, I mean, you don't even got to tack it in there. It's going to be held together on its own. So let me just get a framing square or speed square or something. I'm over here, bro. Let's go for the framing square. Make sure this is relatively good. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, it reads R relatively. Yep, relatively good. And then check this side out, dude, it's funny because all of this stuff is going to be cut out. I feel like I'm building like an XO roll cage with doing the fish mouths and how nice it's going to be. But dude, this HTP 220 Pro Pulse welder doesn't do anything except top of the line weld. So it's gonna look, it's gonna look really good for something that's gonna get cut out. All right, 
So at this point, I just ripped out all of the body bolts and I think it's time to get our platform, the 1998, I think I said 99 in one of the previous videos. I didn't know exactly what year it was, but it's a 1998 Honda CRV. It is time to get that. A little squeaky going on. It's time to get this out of the way so that way we can get the body pulled off the frame so that way I can start to clean up everything else that I need to get clean. So here we go. Platform cruising, let's go. All right, so I want to get the crane all set up, get the El Camino, El Chapo pulled back here, lift off the body, get the frame out of our way, clean up the shop because that is killing me. I hate how dirty the floor is of the shop and get the car back in the shop and then we can start trimming and cutting everything else that we are going to need to do. I know the entire floor of the bed is gonna to need to come out, but I'd rather leave that structural integrity in there for me to actually rip it off of the body. Once I get it ripped off and it's all back in there, I will cut away everything that I need to cut out and brace accordingly. So I think we got a plan. Now it's just a matter of doing it. All right, so really good stuff. We got the shop cleaned out. I can finally breathe again. I don't know about you guys, but when the shop is a mess, my brain is a mess. And don't get me wrong, it's not as clean as it could be, but I just needed it to get, to get a little bit right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the car pulled in here now that it's on a dolly, hold on. And once it's in here, I will lift it up onto jack stands and rebrace and do whatever else accordingly. Let's see how this goes. Oh, you can't see the action, huh? Let me see. Hold on. Oh, why are you going over there, Bubba? Oh, oh. I need to get me a little Bluetooth remote going on so that way I can steer and do and whatever I need to do. Still going the wrong way, Bubba. See, the thing is, this isn't the most efficient system, but it's at least gonna work, you know? When you're by yourself, working by yourself, I mean, I had my mommy help me because she had just came over. She's watching my kid a little bit. That's a little system that we got going on. So luckily, she was able to give me a hand. The El Camino don't want to go straight. Come on, El Chapo. Oh. She ain't too heavy at all at this point. Maybe I'll just disconnect her and pull her in. Oh, she's light, dude. I know a lot of people were saying that the CRV versus El Camino is gonna be so much heavier. In reality, the El Camino is not that much heavier than the CRV. I saw a variance of, I don't know, 200 pounds, depending on where you looked. So. And the 200 pound difference is going to be without having a big old V8 in here plus the weight of the frame. I almost think we're gonna be around the same weight of the CRV, if not a little bit less because we are shedding a lot of weight. So to that comment, suck it. All right, we're looking pretty good. We're in the shop. 
you know what, I don't need to bring it as far forward. I'd rather have a little bit more room to work around it. I actually think I like it just like that, right there. You happy with that, Mr. Chapo? I'm happy with that. So let's get it on some jack stands. Then we will worry about cutting out the rest of this thing. So much easier now that we got all the garbage out of there for me to see what all still needs to come out. I mean, obviously we have a lot of trimming to do, but it's nice to do a little bit of reset. We are definitely moving in the right direction. Ow! That's how you do body work. One more. Ow! Wait, that looks a lot better. Okay, let's keep moving. So the next thing that I wanna do, I wanna start focusing on all of my Lego pieces. I want the bed to come out, but I want it to come out in one nice piece. I don't wanna just chop it up where I believe the CRV is gonna fall. I just wanna get it out of the way. Once I have it in one piece, I can then figure out how I need to rework it. Now, one thing that I haven't really hit on too much is the wheel bases of these vehicles are not the same. So the El Camino body is going to come up a little bit to match the wheel base of the CRV. They are not so off that you'll really notice it, but that's something that I want to change. I'd rather mess with the body rather than extending the platform itself. I just feel like it's going to be a lot easier to do that. So we need to get the bed out of here. The tubs aren't going to be in the right spot. And before I do any of those things, I went ahead and I got some more tubing here. So I'm going to weld this across just to make it structurally sound. I got one for the back as well, just so that way we're not moving all around like crazy. So let's go ahead and get those welded in and then we will focus on removing the bed floor and everything else that's going to be in our way to prevent us from dropping this body on the CRV platform, chassis, whatever you wanna call it. So we have our lower, lower deck rat's neck. This was everything underneath the bed. If you didn't know, El Caminos actually have like a little lower compartment. That's why a lot of drug people like El Caminos. So we are getting rid of this. We will never utilize that again because this is just going to be the back seat area of the CRV. And then we also have this big guy right here, which I'm hoping to pop it up but I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to go about doing it. I'm gonna just start doing something. Something will happen. Uh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Went up one place, down one place. Ah, oh, that's a big unit. Let's see. Ooh. Maybe I can lift that front edge and then pull the back edge. how this is gonna go. So she's wedged in there pretty good. I'm gonna try to just go ahead and get it ripped out of there. Maybe throw it on a time lapse and then we'll figure out what else we gotta do.
Man, so right now it is really starting to come together. I can see the bigger picture of exactly what is going on with this body going on that platform now. I know that was the idea the entire time, but you can really start to see what we are going for. Now, something that I just measured because the CRV floor is sitting right there. This guy is sitting right here. So what I'm kind of going for is from pinch weld to pinch weld. And what I see over here, the inner width of this pinch weld is 55 inches. The outer width of the pinch weld of the CRV is 54 and one quarter. So we have about three quarters of an inch of difference. So then once you split the three quarters, figure about three eighths of an inch of a gap on each side. Now that is not a lot, but a gap is a gap. If we got clearance, we got clearance, 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 is clearance, clearance, right? So we are looking really good. The back is pretty wide compared to the CRV. I'm not too worried about that. The tightest area is going to be up over in this zone. And I think we are looking pretty good. And for everybody that was worried about weight, saying that this is going to be too heavy, check this out. Boom, son, what's up? She's not that heavy at all. Now I know it's going to be reinforced and rebraced and everything, but overall, this body's not that heavy. So my next step is I need to cut out everything that is right up to that pinch weld so that way I can have maximum width of the Elko for El Chapo to go on the CRV. So I think at this point you get the idea. Video number one was getting the CRV prepped out. Video number two is going to be getting the El Camino prepped out. Video number three on the way is where we are going to get both of these guys put together. I got to do a little bit of trimming first, but overall you get the idea. So if you could do me a huge favor, click the link down below to win my 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord. I appreciate everybody that supported me thus far by checking that out. If you'd want to check that out, I would encourage you to go do that because spots are filling up and I'm going to be closing out the giveaway relatively soon. So let me know what you think about this. Let me know how your uncle would have did it to his El Camino because I know all of y'all's uncles got El Caminos in the trailer park. So like this video, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff you know what it is YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. El Chapo's getting some new legs. I'm out.